Before The Last Jedi comes out and gets subjected to a never-ending stream of complaints to the tune of something something Mary Sue, something something Empire Rehash, something something Porgs of the new Jar Jar, I thought I'd take another more critical look at The Force Awakens. When this film was released, everybody loved it, and I did too. I was happy to see a great Star Wars film that lived up to critics and audiences' expectations. And you all know the story after that. Almost overnight, everybody started hating this film. I'm not gonna act like it's criticism wasn't justified, but to call the amount of hatred this film got excessive would be an understatement. It's quickly become the most divisive Star Wars film of all time. And that's in a franchise where all but two of the films are divisive. My personal favorite is when people call it the worst movie of all time. That to me is so vapid and idiotic that I don't understand how people can take it seriously. If you wanted to say that The Force Awakens is the most disappointing movie of all time, that would be a fair, justifiable title. But that doesn't get the big views now, does it? I'm not gonna act like this is a perfect movie, or even that it's the best direction to be taking the story of Star Wars after Return of the Jedi. In fact, I do think it's massively disappointing from that perspective, but we'll get to that later. I just want to make something perfectly clear. I believe that The Force Awakens is great from a filmmaking perspective. As in, putting aside the fact that it's part of a larger mythos, this is a film with excellent direction, great acting, good pacing, amazing effects, good dialogue, fun action, and especially amazing editing. I want to start with the editing because, in case you couldn't tell, that's kind of my thing. When a movie is well edited, it feels alive. Like the film itself feels like an actual character. The editing to me is just as important as the directing because it's the lens through which we view the director's vision. Comedy is ruined if the editing isn't tight. Action is ruined if the editing isn't tight. Baby Driver is a movie that excels at both of these. It's one of my favorite movies of all time for two main reasons. One, because Kevin Spacey's head gets crushed underneath a tire. And two, because it has the best editing I've ever seen in a movie. The comedy works well because of how quick it is. And the action, do I even need to explain? Just watch this. I can't even do that justice with words. Good editing can elevate a movie. Timing is everything. And in this area, The Force Awakens excels. I don't know how you can't look at these scenes and tell me the editing isn't good, even if you don't like the characters or the story or whatever. You hurt Chewie, you're gonna deal with me! You hurt him? He almost killed me six times! <laughs> Which is fine! The Academy Awards are bullshit, but they're my kind of bullshit. So I was very excited to see this movie get a Best Editing nomination in a field otherwise dominated by Best Picture nominees. It was a nice, well-deserved piece of recognition for a film that flowed so smoothly. Now, great editing doesn't necessarily correlate to a great overall film, I know. But here's the thing, every single technical aspect of this movie can be broken down like this. And personally, I find all of them just as exceptional as the editing. Again, this is my opinion, so if you disagree, that's fine. But here's what I think. The acting is great. The cinematography is gorgeous. The colors look great. The sets are wonderful. And all of this can be chalked up to one simple fact. J.J. Abrams is a great sci-fi director. Star Trek Into Darkness has a ton of narrative troubles, but it's a goddamn well-directed movie. Not a perfect movie, but none of those problems are really the fault of its direction. And it's no different here. Every shot feels handmade. I haven't even mentioned some of my favorite aspects of the movie that no one ever seems to talk about. How it manages to tell its story subtly, sometimes even without words. One of the best parts of the movie that no one discusses is our introduction to Rey. It's just five minutes of watching her daily routine without her saying one word of dialogue. Yet, we find out everything we need to know about her. She's a scavenger who longs to be a pilot and leave her monotonous day-to-day -day existence. The music during this montage is also incredibly unique for a Star Wars film and it makes this scene all the more memorable. The other great quiet moment in the film is, eh, spoilers I guess, Han Solo's death scene. It's tense and well acted, yes, but my favorite part about this scene is how you understand Kylo Ren's internal struggle without him having to say anything. The scene itself tells you everything you need to know. It's been established that once the sun is completely drained from the planet, the super weapon will be fully charged. During Han and Kylo's interaction, it looks like Kylo might actually feel remorseful and return to the light side. Now, look, we all knew that wasn't going to happen, and we all knew Han was going to die as soon as he stepped on that bridge. But the key here is that the movie made us believe, even for a split second, that Kylo might actually have been moved by his father's words. In fact, he probably was. But then, the sun goes down. We, the audience, know what that signifies. 
The weapon is fully charged. Kylo realizes that too, and all of a sudden he hesitates to relinquish his lightsaber. The temptation of power, of the dark side, is too strong for him. The tension in this scene is cranked up when suddenly... The subtlety in the storytelling here is phenomenal, and it makes for one of the greatest scenes in the entire Star Wars saga. Thank you. And lastly, I want to briefly touch on pacing, something the majority of Star Wars films, let's be honest, tend to have a problem with. Let's compare the pacing of The Force Awakens to that of... Nah, that's way too easy. No, let's do Return of the Jedi and Rogue One. I love Return of the Jedi. In fact, I even prefer it over The Force Awakens and kinda sorta a new hope as well. It just has so many great things going for it, but it has a ton of obvious problems too. Most obvious of which being the pacing. The movie drags at almost every opportunity. The Jabba's Palace stuff drags, the Ewok Village stuff drags, Yoda's death drags, and that dumbass battle with the Ewoks and the Empire goes on forever and distracts from two of the best sequences in Star Wars history. I could simply say Rogue One has the opposite problem and leave it at that, but in all honesty, this movie is both a rusher and a dragger. It rushes through anything related to Jyn Erso's or frankly any character's backstory. It rushes through a ton of planets at the beginning of the movie, making it hard to remember any of them. And as much as we all love that Vader scene, its aftermath is rushed like hell. The movie ends less than a minute after this intense moment. It's like going 80 miles per hour only to suddenly slam on the brakes. It's not exactly the smoothest ride. At the same time, this movie, at least to me, kind of drags on both Jedha and Idu. I feel like either the time spent on these planets should have been shorter, or the main character should have been more interesting, but whatever, that's a story for another day. So yeah, these movies both have serious pacing issues, and if I wanted to waste your time talking about the pacing in these movies, I could, but really, what's the point? Meanwhile, taking a look at The Force Awakens, it really doesn't have any pacing problems at all in my opinion. Every scene is as long as it needs to be, nothing really feels rushed, and nothing feels dragged out. The movie knows exactly when to introduce new characters, when to bring back the old, when to have action, when to have comedy, eh, for the most part. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? Comedy goals! In general, this movie knows exactly what it wants to be. A loving tribute to the original trilogy that seeks to inspire a new generation of fans. I absolutely adore this movie. It's the kind of blockbuster that is so rare in Hollywood these days. A film that feels like one person's singular vision. And that person is George Lucas. Alright, let's talk about the story now. Yes, it's a beat-for-beat beat remake of A New Hope. Not a shot-for-shot shot remake, I'm very tired of people saying that. That implies that they literally film the exact same scenes as A New Hope and play them in the same order, which isn't true. It's a beat-for-beat beat remake, taking the same story bits and shuffling them around into something different. I'm gonna be honest, if we're talking about this movie as its own individual movie, I really don't mind that it's so similar to A New Hope. I thought it was pretty cool to see a modern director's take on a classic story we all know so well. It felt magical even almost like poetry, sort of. It rhymed. Plus, this is the first Star Wars movie after the prequels alienated a ton of Star Wars fans. What were you really expecting? So, in terms of seeing an old story redone from a new point of view, I really love this movie. Here's the problem, though. This isn't a remake, it's a sequel. That's why this storyline is kind of disappointing, because it's rehashing the same events we already saw characters in this movie go through. All their struggles to defeat the Empire and bring order to the galaxy? Eh, it was pointless. 30 years later, the Empire's still going strong and still building evil, planet-destroying weapons. So, what was the point of the original trilogy then? In the grand scheme of the Star Wars saga, it was really just a slight detour, considering the setup of the galaxy is the exact same 30 years later. And I'm not gonna lie, that's majorly underwhelming. It doesn't just apply to the Empire though. Luke managed to successfully turn his father back to the light side, despite all the horrors he caused, including wiping the Jedi Order out entirely. Now Luke can restore the Jedi Order to what it once was- Oh, never mind! Now Luke's nephew is gonna wipe out the Jedi Order and turn to the dark side. And Luke, instead of dealing with it like he did last time, just kinda gives up and goes into exile. Great! Han and Chewie are still smugglers, Leia's still a rebellion general, Pancake Face is still a pilot, Admiral Ackbar is still being Admiral Ackbar. Again, what was the point of the original trilogy? Personally, I think Rogue One is inferior to Force Awakens in most ways, but at least it added to the ongoing story of Star Wars in more substantial ways. Plus, it introduced more new ships. Yes, the movie that takes place 10 minutes before A New Hope introduces more new concepts than the movie that takes place 34 years after A New Hope. 
That is not a good sign. So yeah. From a filmmaking perspective, I think The Force Awakens is great, but as the next chapter of the Star Wars saga, it's a massive disappointment. I think that's why people seem to loathe this movie. It's not a good direction to be taking things. And if The Last Jedi is a beat for beat remake of Empire, then I'll concede that Disney clearly has no idea what to do with Star Wars. Yet, I still think I'm going to enjoy The Last Jedi for its filmmaking merits. It has a good director who Disney is already bringing back for more Star Wars films, good actors, cool looking effects, and yeah, by that title alone, I I doubt this story is gonna go the way we think. Let's all just take a chill pill and reserve our judgment until after we see the movie, okay? Me personally, I'll continue to enjoy The Force Awakens for its entertainment value and filmmaking merits, but I'll also hope that we do something a little different next time around. Also, I know people hate Rey because she's overpowered and uh, Mary Sue and stuff like that, but at least she didn't single-handedly blow up an entire droid control ship at the age of nine. <laughs>